he goes and like looks out. It was a beautiful day. Like the sun was perfect. The sky was perfect. And then he goes and looks at me. He's like, well, I love you so much. You know, you blah, 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 goes to all the sweet things. And he goes on one knee and he has this bag with him. He always wears like a side bag. Yeah. He pulls out a box and when he opens it, there's no ring. <laughs> What do you mean? Like, Will you marry me? He's like, the ring, where's the ring? Oh my God, the ring Stop. must fall up. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Married to the Game. And if you tuned in last episode, I know you've enjoyed Maggie Matthews. She's just so fantastic. And the story of the birth of their son is an all-timer. And I'm just so honored and blessed that she was able to share the full story of what actually happened with Beckett. And I'm sure that there will be many more of those moments to come as Jake and Maggie continue on their journey through life. I mean, they're just such incredible parents and people, and I was so happy to be able to share that. But it's really cool because this season of the podcast so far, it's been people that I'm actually friends with, and I hope that comes across when you're listening because it's not only an honor that these people trust me, but it's actually just so fun to have a conversation with my friends. So this next guest that I'm talking to, I'm just so pumped because she's been through a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And yes, I'm talking about a World Series championship ring. My friend Andrea Alves is on the show today and she is just such a phenomenal person. Her and her husband, Ozzy Alves, who is one of the star infielders for the Atlanta Braves, they do so much for this community and specifically when it comes to dogs, that is a huge passion for both of them. And Andrea really does a lot of the work for their foundation. And that's what I want to come across in this episode. She's really gonna give you an idea idea of how much she actually does when Ozzy is really busy. Now, Ozzy is super hands-on too, of course, when it comes to the foundation, but Andrea is so in love with everything that they do, and it's a really cool experience. She also is going to take you through what it was actually like to ride on the bus during the World Series Parade. Crazy, crazy stuff. So it is my honor to present this episode of Married to the Game with Andrea Alves. Andrea, I am so excited that you wanted to do Married to the Game. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me too. I love it. I actually listened to the previous podcast before awesome. and I just love how you how you do it. It's just such a fun conversation and we get to connect in different ways. So I love that. Yeah, I love that. And thank you for listening. I appreciate that. It's it's so much fun. I love connecting this group of women because it's so unique and you guys can speak to things that a lot of people can't. And I like to show the other side of athletes because as you know, you play a very large role in Ozzy's life and you're a lot of the reason why his life can run so smoothly when he's playing baseball. So love to get your perspective and you're doing so many incredible things. Um, so I want to start with what's behind you, the Ozzy Alves Foundation. You are such a big role. Yeah, I mean, you kill it. You do so much great work. And I think people see it and they see, you know, Ozzy Alves, it's great, but you are a big reason behind this foundation. Tell me how you got involved. Well, we started the foundation together. It was something that we always wanted to do. And we both grew up in um, countries where stray dogs are very common. You know, it's very common to see many stray dogs struggling and it's nearly impossible to go out and just take all of them out of the street because it's so many. So that was always a passion of ours that we wanted to do as much as possible for, for dogs. And um, we started, you know, to adopt our own dogs and it kind of started right there. And we came together and we decided to create the foundation. And a lot of people don't realize how involved we are. Uh, we actually are the ones that are doing a lot of the rescuing, going to the shelters, taking the dogs to the vet, you know, having them stay at our house. We do our best to minimize costs so we can pour it all into the dogs. So we're the ones that are just moving dogs around and dropping them off at fosters. Um, everybody that volunteers with us, we've met, we've talked to, they've been to our house, we've been to their house. So we just create a really good community of people that care about the same things that we care about, which is rescuing these dogs and giving them a better chance. And we're very 
lucky to have found the right people to partner with from the beginning. So we work with mirror image canine. And I talked about, I talk about them a lot. We have a podcast together too. think like yeah. a dog podcast. And we, when we connected that we both had that same passion, you know, to help dogs and help them achieve their full potential because our rescue mission is not just get a dog, rescue it, and just get it adopted out. We really spend time with that dog, just one-on-one time, getting to know their personality, figuring out what works for them, and then trying to match them with the right family. So it's a successful story. So. I mean, that's really unique because there's a lot of athletes that give back, obviously, and it's no fault to them. Everybody's very busy. They're not as hands-on as you guys are. Why was that so important for you guys to be the ones that are going out and physically interacting with the dogs and adopting the dogs? I mean, that that's a lot of work. Why was that important? Well, we want to be, we that, that really starts with um, our main goal is trying to figure out what's best for the dogs. So, you know, I, we're at a point right now where we're trying to make it easier for our fosters and our volunteers. And a lot of our fosters, they have other dogs, you know, they may have kids. So we try not to place a dog in a home where it's going to be stressful for that foster. So it's important that we step in first and rescue them. And then they spend a few days actually at our house. And then we get to know their personality. We take them to the vet. We see if they're all good. And then we move them to that foster home to make sure everybody's safe, you know, just make sure everybody's happy. We're not putting anybody in a uncomfortable situation where the dog may be sick and have something contagious and passes to the resident dog. So we're creating protocols, but it's really big for us to be part of this because it's a huge passion of ours. And don't get me wrong, you know, it's very hectic sometimes and yeah. we're running around. Uh, just yesterday, Ozzy helped me pick up one of the foster dogs and bring it home. And then uh, right now we have three of our fosters here with us because our oh other gosh. fosters were going out of town at the same time and everything just kind of fell in the same weekend. So in our house right now, we have a total of 10 dogs, 10, but and mind we, you, this is in the middle of baseball season. Okay. And now we're <laughs> getting closer to the postseason. This is chaos. 10. Yeah. 10, but we have a good system. My mom helps us out oh a lot. Gosh. Ozzy's really involved every chance that he gets he gets a dog he you know walks with them he takes them out on a ride he just makes sure that everybody gets you know the right amount of um, activities so they can stay busy and we have a good system just crate rotating everybody so we figured it out throughout the period of time that we started the the rescue program but you know we love to be involved we love to meet every dog that we rescue we love to spend time with them because we feel we care about them like they're our own dogs and i feel like even as we grow and build our rescue and get more volunteers and fosters that we're always going to want to be super involved because it's awesome for us it's really rewarding to see that dog you know see them for the first time and how much they were struggling and then see them a couple of weeks later and they're just a different dog Okay, so. look, 10 dogs is a lot. And I know <laughs> 10 dogs is a lot, which is incredible. But you have to be thinking sometimes like this is the craziest thing ever. I know that you make it look easy and you're always so put together and you look beautiful <laughs> and you're killing it and you're juggling so many different things. But you have a lot going on right now, especially as we're getting close to the postseason. Are you stressed at all? Well, you know, it's I try not to think about it as stressful. That's um, good. It's not as much stressful for me. It's, I like to be on the go. You know, yeah. I like to be, to be active and Ozzy is the same way. He loves to be active from the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to the field, he's up and doing something and yeah. he's really into the aquariums. I'm sure some people saw that a few <laughs> weeks ago with MLB. He was like all about talking about it, you know, and, um, it's that's his passion, right? He love we love our dogs, we love our pets, and we stay busy with them. And it's, it doesn't feel stressful; it feels really rewarding to do love it that. all. And thankfully, we have the right people in our lives that are helping us and assisting us. And I can turn to them, and they step in and help. So, it takes a group of people for sure, um, but we're really blessed to have the right people. And then, you know, powered by our passion, which is it makes it everything kind of feel fun and easy and rewarding. So 
I love that. That's amazing. And I know that you guys love each dog individually and love them so much, but (laughs) Ozzy clearly has a favorite. In the few times that I've talked to him about your dogs, he is obsessed with Bubbles. Yeah, he is. So (laughs) Bubbles, his story was, I'm sure some people know because, um, you know, a lot of people met Bubbles through Ozzy's page and he posts about him a lot. But when we first started our rescue, we went to visit a shelter And we were just going to get a tour. We were going to see how everything was being done, um, you know, in the back end. And we, at the end of that tour, they asked like, Ozzy, do you want to bring out a dog that you may want to just interact with and, you know, talk, we can get some content with you guys and we can push that adoption. And then Ozzy was, he thought about it. He's like, well, I, I remember this one dog. So he went back and he picked out Bubbles. And as soon as Bubbles walked out in the play yard, Ozzy was like, we're going to take him home. And this is in front of like all this shelter staff that's that's been rooting for this dog. So I'm sitting there like, and everybody's like, yay, we're going to take Bubbles home. Okay. Don't worry about it. You guys could just go like, we'll figure we'll get the adoption paperwork super. So I was just like, okay, so we just got a dog. (laughs) There's no conversation about it at all. (laughs) No, there was no like discussion. It was like, this is my dog. This is happening. But Bubbles has been such a blessing for us because when I started the rescue with Ozzy, in my head was like, everything was going to work out. You know, all my dogs are going to love each other. They're just going to play. We have this yard. We're going to bring them home. It's going to be awesome. Right. (laughs) And then Bubbles gets here and everything's great for a few like a few weeks, you know, everything's awesome. And then him and my other resident dogs, they get in a fight. Um, and it was scary to see that, you know, but thanks to that bad behavior, I was connected with mirror image. And then it created like a whole passion for dogs that like struggle with some anxiety, some issues and, you know, dogs, just like us, they have their moods and their, you know, their personalities and their likes and dislikes. And it's, it's up to us to like accept them for who they are and guide them in the right direction and put them in the right position. So they don't have to make bad decisions, like, you know, protecting themselves or feel like they have to ask for space. Um, but you know, bubbles is so special for us because he's kind of opened so many doors in our lives. And like, he brought so many amazing people in our lives just because of him, you know, so, and him and Ozzy, they're like inseparable. Um, he loves to go on car rides with Ozzy. As soon as Ozzy backs, like gets in the car, he's like, I'm going, where are we it's going? So cute. He doesn't like to leave Ozzy's side. It's like, they've been together their whole lives. I can tell yeah. because in the conversations that I've had with Ozzy, like specifically about bubbles, he just goes on like, a rabbit hole of look at this picture and look at this yeah. video and look at this day when I was with him. And so it's funny every yeah. time I see him now in the clubhouse, I'm like, how's bubbles? Cause I know that that is his dog. Yeah, it is. And they, they were made for each other. I mean, the, uh, bubbles is like obsessed with Ozzy. Um, so cute. I feed him every day. I take him <laughs> on walks. I take him to the vet, you know, but as soon as Ozzy steps in the room, forget That's about it. you. Like I don't, I don't know you lady. Like I'm, my dad's here. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're probably going to see Dex walk behind me in a second. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the the origin of you and Ozzy, because I mm-hmm. want to get into winning a world series, the perspective of that from a wife. Um, but before all of that happened, you guys had to meet somehow. How did you guys meet? So I knew you were going to ask this question. <laughs> <laughs> you were ready. You were like, she's I was, gonna ready. I was like, okay. <laughs> So when we first, like in the first beginning stages of us like being together, I used to tell people we met through mutual friends, right? Uh-huh. But we actually met through Instagram. And I feel like There's that's no shame in that. <laughs> now, now that I'm meeting more people that met the same way, I'm like, all right, I don't feel it's as fun. weird about this. <laughs> Uh, cause it just sounds weird. Like we met on Instagram, <laughs> but we initially connected through Instagram, uh, in, on 2017. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't realize how close we were to each other. Cause I was already le- living near the park and he was living near the park and we talked, um, we just kind of talked for a few weeks, just first through Instagram messenger, or, you know, DM. And then we exchanged phone numbers and then we started, you know, just getting more into conversations. And then one day he came back, I think it was after a game. He said, um, Hey, do you want to, you know, come get something to eat in the park? Like we can hang out. And 
I told my mom, I was like, Hey, I'm going to go meet this guy at the park. And she's like, what guy? And I'm like, this guy, she's like, how did you guys meet on the internet? She's like, you're absolutely not going to meet a guy you just met off Instagram. You're not going. So I had this, and I was always a, like, I'm a homebody. Right. Yeah. And my mom is my best friend. Like we go everywhere together. And for her to hear this was like, what are you doing? You're just right. doing something that every parent tells their child not to do is meet of strangers off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I told her, I was like, I'm going, I'm going. So I get in the car and I go and, uh, we meet that day. And after that, it, it was kind of like, we just hit it off. We just connected and we, we hit it off. And the next day I find myself like the next few days that we're together, we're just like really hanging out every day. And I knew nothing about baseball, like absolutely nothing. Uh, so we just started hanging out more and more. And at this time he was living in the park, like the actual, one of those condos around there. Yeah. And him and Camargo were, um, roommates. So when I first came over their apartment, it was like such a guy apartment, oh, right? I'm so sure. can you imagine like oh my gosh. the mess and the, <laughs> the things that you might see in a guy apartment, like two baseball, two baseball dudes, players, <laughs> like just in the same living space. Um, Did you just like have to mentally prepare yourself? You're like, okay, Johan yes. Camargo and Ozzy Albies are living together. This is going to be a disaster what I want <laughs> So I didn't know a lot of, like, I started to learn more about Ozzy's like career and everything, sure. uh, because at that year, I think it's the same year he got called up. So, um, it was a lot of like things for him too changing. And then him and Camargo were together and they're just like these younger guys living together. So I'm really, um, OCD. I'm like, I love to clean. I love to get things organized. <laughs> so from the first day I like visited their space, I find myself calling my mom. I'm like, mom, can you buy me laundry detergent? And can you please help me clean this please. place up? <laughs> so after that, it's just been, we fell into the routine of seeing each other every day. I'm helping him get, get organized. You know, <laughs> I'm like, doing his laundry of like, like two every weeks every guy in. though they're, <laughs> they're so messy so I'm just like I'm like why am I doing this guy's laundry that I just <laughs> I don't know but it worked out that. you know it yeah. worked out we we and what I love a you know a lot about Ozzy is that he's very family oriented and being that me and my mom were so close we're best friends Sometimes it would be like, why are you always with your mom? You know, like, why yeah. are you always with your mom? And then Ozzy, as soon as she met my, he met my mom, he's like, Hey, let's go out to eat. Let's, you know, That's let's awesome. have dinner together. And he would like walk her to the car and like, they would, you know, slowly get closer and closer. And now they're best friends. Like they talk every day and like, he's calling my mom and asking, like, they're having these whole plans on the side. And I'm on this. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Wait a second. Where she's my I? best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where am I in this plan? Like, That's really funny. You, guys, you know, <laughs> FaceTiming and I'm over here like, what's going on? <laughs> but I love it. It's that's, I feel like that's what even made us get closer is because of the fact that he's so family oriented and he like has such a big heart. And, um, that's an, an amazing quality of his. It's like, what, you know, how, passionate he is, um, to make relationships and to build that. And I, I can sense that from you guys. I mean, you guys have such a strong relationship and you guys are so much fun to be around collectively. So <laughs> I can only imagine with your mom in the mix, cause I know you guys are close. It's so fun. Um, yeah. going back to your first date, did you guys eat in the battery? So we had, it wasn't like a first date, I would say it was okay. more like the first meeting. Right. Yeah. So we just, um, hung out like around the battery and we didn't really get a bite to eat or anything. We were just like Did walking people, around. Like, look at you guys. I mean, I, I don't know how this works <laughs> with him in the battery. I feel like that's such a choice. Like what? I know it was the year that he got called up. So it's a little different, but I feel like if he was doing that now, just walking around the battery would probably be a little difficult. Right. Yeah. But you know what? Like the Braves fans are so nice and yeah, they're so sure. like respectful okay. that we could walk around the battery and although you see people get like light up and excited, like that's Ozzy. Oh my gosh, that's Ozzy. Right. They still don't come and be like, Hey, I want a picture or Hey, oh, do that's this. Nice. you know, it's like they, um, a lot of times we go out in public and we might be in a really busy area 
And people see like excited, but they respect and then they wait for the right moment and they come up and they're and they're and we have good conversations, you know, and we connect with a lot of people. A lot of the people that we actually got close to started off as like fans that reached out to Ozzy and said, hey, can I send you, you know, a painting that I made or hey, I made this for you or like that's how it started. And it's it's awesome because it's just real like family oriented, sweet, you know, people that care about him as a human too, and love his talent. And it's, and it's fun for him. Like if once he starts talking to someone, he will go on and on and on too. So he's like a talkative person. (laughs) Um, so our first official day was at Rays on the river. Okay. Okay. And that's when we sat down, we had our dinner. We just talked. It's a nice place. There's like nice (laughs) ambiance. It's on the river. It's very nice. It was nice. So we had, um, that was like our official first date. And then fast forward to when he uh, proposed, that was also the the place he chose to propose because that was our first date. Yeah. That's really really sweet. sweet. (laughs) I bet you loved that, didn't you? I did. I was not expecting it because it was my birthday when he did, when he did pop the question. (laughs) On your birthday? (laughs) On my birthday. Yeah. Are, are we are we a fan of this? Do we like getting proposed to on our birthday? We like it. I do because I wasn't. I'm not a, a like a festive person. So on my birthday, I'm like, don't make a big deal. Yeah. Don't don't throw a party. Don't just want to go to dinner. It's like I just want to go to dinner. I want to get a massage. Like that's right. what I want to do. And you know, he felt like that day. I think was going to take me more off guard because we were going to go to dinner anyways. Um, And he had, it was me, my mom and him. And it was just us like in the restaurant area. And he made it really cute. I mean, like he called the restaurant ahead of time. He let everybody know, like they had everything prepared. And (laughs) it was funny because when we were, we were eating, um, he was like, the waiter brought, brought me, the waiter was really excited, by the way, like that day, he was like very happy with me, like being like, he was like, you're, how's your day going? Like, are you having a good day? And I was just like, you like, this what guy is, is this really guy? happy that we're here. I don't know. And then he brought me, <laughs> that's really he, funny. He brought me a cake and I was like eating the cake. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. You know, thank you for my birthday. Like he brought me a piece of cake. So I'm eating it and Ozzy's looking at me because he wanted to go out in the outdoor area to to do his thing. Yeah. And he wanted to go at the specific spot, but the sun was going down. And it's like, hurry up and eat your cake. Yeah. He was like, um, are you done? Like, let's go look at the sunset. I'm like, no, I want to eat You're my like cake. mid-bite. You're like, um, excuse me. I'm not <laughs> going know. outside right now. And we had a whole back and forth. I was like, I'm going to eat my cake. He's like, no, let's go outside quick. Let's go take a picture. I'm like, why do you want to take a picture all the time? Like oh we, were, I, we were having all this like back and forth. And then I'm like, all right, fine, let's go. And then we go and, um, he goes and, like looks out it was a beautiful day like the sun was perfect the sky was perfect and then he goes and looks at me he's like well I love you so much you know you the bag goes to all the sweet things and he goes on one knee and he has this bag with him he always wears like a side bag yeah he pulls out a box and when he opens it there's no ring <laughs> what do you mean like, will you marry me he's like the ring where's the ring oh my god the ring must Stop. have fallen so he goes back in his bag. He's like, oh no, because he, for some reason he had two boxes inside of his bag and he picked up the empty box. So right oh when I'm gosh. like crying, cause he's so, he's being so sweet. I automatically like, like burst out laughing because it was so <laughs> funny. His face, like his panic. He went into Ozzie, full panic sucks. mode. I know. Okay. He so the ring it. was in there though, right? It was in there. Okay. We found it. Like oh everything God. worked out. <laughs> I didn't know that. That is he the was, funniest thing I've ever heard. So the picture that we have is me literally laughing in his face while he's like asking me to marry him because I was laughing so hard at the fact he didn't have the ring and he thought like it fell down somewhere. So did he that- notice it? Like, cause that, I mean, I guess if he's like opening it towards you, did he notice it or were you like, where the heck is the ring? Well, I looked at it. He's like, wait, <laughs> there's the ring. So that's how... We, you know, that's how it happened, but it was a good story. It made it a a really funny, like one of a kind moment, you know? So you go from not knowing anything about baseball, which honestly, Ozzy probably really liked. 
I think that's probably a good thing. He gets to teach you about baseball and you love him for him and all of those really fun things to, so going from not knowing anything about baseball to winning a world series. I mean, that is just such an incredible opportunity. Take me through just that season and the culmination of winning a world series and just how special that was. Well, he's a very dedicated person. You know, he's always positive. He's always happy. He always looks on the bright side of things. So the entire time that he's going through that process and getting closer to winning, he's just remains focused, remains calm, you know, takes it one day at a time. And I really admire that. Yeah. Um, so he's that whole season was, you know, really like magical and different, you know, for all of us. Um, but it was, I was, I remember being there with him and it was so emotional. Like after every game that they would win, I would like burst out crying because yeah. I would, I would be the one stressed out and he would yeah. be like totally calm about it, you know? <laughs> um, but I knew that it meant so much to him and, um, just to see him like give it his all and become really passionate. And every day from the moment he wakes up, he's like preparing himself for that moment, like mentally, physically, and to see how much work he puts into it, it was just like, it felt like I was in a dream, you know, when we won, when we got into the field and the Braves does an amazing job at including the families as part of every single moment. So they make it possible for us to travel together at certain trips. They, they take pictures, they make it really memorable. They have families come together and that just all makes it like special from both ends. So as soon as they won, they got us on the field. And I remember he was uh, looking for me and I was looking for him and we didn't like find each other. And he's <laughs> like, I'm at home base. Like go to home, go, go there. <laughs> and he's standing there like right at oh. the, the base waiting for me. And we see each other and we just That's like sweet. hug and cry and cry together. And after that, it was like, we were just living the dream, you know, and it was so much fun um, from the moment they won to, you know, getting into the off season and everything. And it's still today. He, he just looks back at that. He's like, I can't believe it. You know, I can't believe that's like, I have that title and I played and I gave it my all and I was part of that moment. So that was huge for all of the Braves country, but for him as a player, for me being on his side and our families, and it was just really emotional, really emotional. Yeah. It gives me the chills. Cause you know, it, just covering it, it was the coolest thing that I've ever experienced. And I can only imagine being invested with, you know, a husband or a son. It's probably just, I don't know, indescribable. And yeah. I, I love watching everybody and how emotional it was. And even the parade, the parade was like the coolest thing ever. And Braves country was amazing. What was it like being, you were on a bus, right? Oh my God. It was insane. <laughs> I bet. And, you know, Lots of alcohol, just so we're all clear. There was a yes, lot of partying going there on. There was but... a lot going on. So Ozzy's not like a big drinker. He's just a, like a natural, like excited, happy person. Yeah. He's just so, like vibes. Yeah. Just vibes. vibes. So we're in the bus and we're going through, uh, <laughs> we're going through like downtown area or whatever. And going I through, remember, you guys were speeding. That was I like remember, the I was fastest say bus. That. <laughs> I was going to say that we were not on the, so we were not on the super fast bus. Like we oh, were, okay. we so at the, at the, um, <laughs> downtown area, we were not going fast. Right. It was like yeah. very like, okay, we're saying everybody was super nice. Like, yeah. okay. But then the bus gets on the highway and no, <laughs> no, like, you know, no warning given. We're all on the top. We start having our, like, everything's flying off. And we're like, oh, crap, we better get down. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm dying. <laughs> we just get on the highway to get to Truist. Yeah. And we're all like, what's going on? Like, why are we going so fast? And everybody's just, like, you know, cold. Everything's yeah, it was cold going, that day. Everything's, like, flying by. But when we get close to Truist, <laughs> that's when it got crazy. Because the fans were there. They showed out and oh gosh, um, it was crazy. So we're on the bus and it started like where people started throwing stuff up to them so they yeah. could catch it. So like people would throw their phones like they would throw people um, were throwing their, fo Why? their phones because they wanted <laughs> the guys to take a selfie with it and throw um, it back. But that's oh, like wow. a gamble for everything to go right. Like, bless their did hearts. it go right? 
A lot of, yeah, a lot of them went right. I don't know because (laughs) it got to the point where they were throwing like beer and like bottles of, you know, for the guys to catch and like drink. Yeah. And the guys were having a blast because they could catch, you know, like a thing coming, but I can't. So (laughs) I was getting hit from all corners. I was just like, I'm going down stairs like you catch me at the end of this y'all have fun upstairs yeah fun and they were having fun like they were having so much fun and everybody was just like the energy and the happiness and like everything was it like very energetic and just seeing that it like gives me just talking about it gives me chills because it's so it was so awesome it's like one in a lifetime feeling um because, hopefully twice in a lifetime twice yes but hopefully I mean, twice <laughs> but it's just like I think every time is going to be different because like that first time that you experience that like that oh, yeah. very first time and you know god bless we're going to have many more but that very first feeling it's going to be it, it's like something you never experienced it before you know so it was it was awesome like I have all good things to say it was like the most amazing time of our lives yeah and I, I and- loved it I feel like Braves country was just like, they're always so supportive, but it was just so extra. I mean, I, I couldn't even believe I was sitting on top of a building doing our show and I could just see, I couldn't even see the sidewalk. I couldn't see the street. All I saw was just bodies, humans <laughs> everywhere. It was the they coolest ever, thing yeah, ever. So cool. The clubhouse celebrations with champagne and beer and everything. How much fun is that for you to watch? Oh my gosh. They really pack out the champagnes and the, the bottles and they come so out fun. of there like soaking, soaking wet. Like it's, <laughs> and, and Ozzy always FaceTimes me in the middle of the craziness. So oh all I see is all these guys jumping around, pouring champagne on each other. Like, no, I love chill. That. like they don't have a limit. They love to party. And that those group of guys, like they're the Braves always, always does such a great job putting like the right guys together, like the right group. And they all have great personalities and they all get along and they all love each other like brothers. And it's just a loving, like caring feeling that it's honest. Like they love to be around each other. Um, it's genuine. You two are two of the most genuine people I've ever met. So I was so grateful whenever you wanted to come on the podcast and that just radiated through this episode. So thank you so much. I always appreciate you. So good seeing you. And thank you for hanging with my uh, dungeon background. (laughs) It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I love to be part of it. And I, I love what you're doing, just creating different conversations around that. So perfect. Thank you. Wasn't she the best? I just love talking to her and recalling all these stories about how many dogs they have, how many more they plan to have, the plans for their foundation and where it's going, where it's heading. They're just so awesome. And it's cool because baseball introduces you to so many amazing people, just like my job does, obviously. But with baseball, you get to get a little closer to these guys and their families because you're around them all the time. It's a long season, obviously. And they are just as genuine as as it gets. What you see on social media, what you hear in this podcast, exactly who they are, which I think is so cool and really unique. So it was such a fun time to record this podcast episode. If you couldn't tell that we were having a blast, just giggling along and I'm excited for what's to come on the show and many more baseball lives that will happen throughout the Married to the Game episodes. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to listen to Married to the Game, we have all of our episodes up on 11alive.com and you can go back and listen to any of those episodes whenever you want. But for now, I'm Maria Martin and this is Married to the Game.